hello. Come right in. Oh, George, we've got company. This is Bill Goodwin speaking for Lever Brothers, makers of Swan, the new white floating soap that's purer than finest Castiles. Well, it's Tuesday night again, time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, their guests, Frank Sinatra, Felix Mills and his orchestra, and the Swan Tet. And now meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Here they are. Well, George and Gracie have just returned home from a tour of the army camps where they entertained the boys during their eight-week summer vacation. Uh, home again. Yeah, but wasn't it fun entertaining the soldiers, dear? Yeah. Our trip would have been perfect if it hadn't been for one little thing. What was that, dear? Well, I never got to sing Ain't Misbehaving. You know, we, we, we kind of built up to the climax of our act, the smash finish, my song, and as soon as I started singing, something would happen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'd get right to my favorite part, you know, where I'd sing it. Like Jackie Horner in the corner, don't go nowhere, and I don't care. <laughs> That's where it happened. Yeah, somebody always yelled, dismissed. Or somebody always blew a bugle. Yeah. In one camp, they even fired a gun. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And it barely missed you. Yeah. That's a shame. Huh? <laughs> yes, and dear, you have such a lovely voice, too. You really think so? Well, of course. I wish you'd sing for me right now, Judge. Oh, gee, sweetheart. There's just the two of us there. I feel kind of foolish. Oh, please. Mama wants to hear her talented little songbird. Oh, Gracie, I don't Oh, know. come on. Oh, you know that part that you sing so well? The part that they always interrupt. Well, okay, I'll give you a little sell. Like Jackie Horner in the corner, don't go nowhere and I don't care. Oh. <laughs> always in the same place. See, was at the door, Gracie. All right, dear. Well, hello, Mr. Postman. Welcome home, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you again. Oh, and it's nice to see you. Did you have a pleasant summer? Suburb, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> I entered a contest at the beach to choose the most perfect specimen of manhood. Naturally, I won. Oh, naturally. Yes. I am now Mr. Seaside Lagoon of 1943. Oh, I'm so proud of you. So am I. Well, I just dropped by to say hello. I'd better get along and deliver this fan mail. Oh, you certainly have a lot of it. Yes, and it's all for Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra? He sings, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. He and painted on stockings are all the vogue now. <laughs> Sinatra sing. Well, I sing just like him. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you how I sound. <clears throat> this is just like Frank Sinatra sound. <clears throat> oh, that's how he sounds? Exactly, Mrs. Burns. Oh. Well, thanks for your welcome, and goodbye, Mr. Postman. Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember... Keep smiling. Uh, who was that, dear? Oh, just the postman. Oh, any mail for us? No, none for us, but he had about 10,000 letters for this Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra? Mm hmm. He, uh, he sings, doesn't he? <laughs> yep, but not as well as you, George. Oh, no, Grace. Oh, I mean it. Why should all the women be absolutely crazy about Frank Sinatra and feel about you, well, the way they do? <laughs> Answer me, why? Well... No, I thought of that. But I meant something else. I... Oh, come in. Gracie, darling! Why, Tootsie Sagwell. Oh, you haven't changed a bit. Gracie, is that a nice thing to say to her? <laughs> oh, but do you mind if I sit down? I'm so excited, I can hardly talk. Why, Tootsie? I just got the thrill of my life. I took a taxi over here, and who do you think got out of it before I got in? Frank Sinatra. Him again. Oh, 
The taxi ride over here cost me four dollars and eighty cents. Four dollars and eighty cents? Why, you only live five blocks from here. Well, I know, but do you think I'd get out of that cab until the seat cooled off? <laughs> Say, Tootsie. In other words, uh, in other words, you didn't want to lose touch with Sinatra, huh? Of course not. <laughs> oh, isn't that awful? Tootsie and the man, anyhow. What do I see in him? Oh, Gracie, when he sings all or nothing at all, nothing at all never enters my mind. <laughs> Just to think that my husband has three times the talent Frank Sinatra has. Who has? George, that's who. And he has ten times Frank Sinatra's sex For what? Sex. <laughs> All right. All right, you'll see. I'm going to do something about this. Well, hi, you people. Welcome home. Oh, Bill Goodwin. Hello. Hello, Bill. Good to see you. George? Uh, Tootsie, aren't you going to say hello to your dream man? No, Bill. <laughs> Why, Tootsie. Oh, I get it. Bill, she's in love with Frank Sinatra now. Yes, I'm sorry, Bill, but I guess you and I have... Oh, well, that's all right, Tootsie. Personally, I... <laughs> the first time I saw you. <laughs> oh, you're just jealous of Frankie. You just ought to see the crowd of women outside of his house when he sings in the shower. Oh, no. Wait a minute, Tootsie. Those women aren't there to hear Frank sing. Huh? No, they're trying to get at that soap he uses. Oh, right. <laughs> well, gee, you know how women go for swan soap. You see, swan is actually four swell soaps in one. The soap for your hands and face for bathing the baby. The soap for your dishes and for your light laundry. Four swell soaps in one. Well, look, I'll tell you a little secret, Bill. George is going to take Frank Sinatra's place as the number one singer. What? Well, let's face it. Can anyone hold a candle to George when he sings? Well, Gracie, come to think of it, that's just how George sounds when he sings. <laughs> how? Like someone was holding a candle to him. <laughs> you forget it, Gracie. This Sinatra boy is dynamite. Why, the girls offered to do his laundry. They clamor to wash his dishes. Uh, d- does he let them? Well, of course not. You think he wants to miss the fun of washing those dishes with swans? <laughs> Why, that swan's an ever-loving such and whiz. Swan is mild, too. So mild, you don't have to worry about rough red hands. Swan helps keep him looking soft and beautiful. Oh, I wonder who's doing Frankie's light laundry. <laughs> well, whoever it is, I hope they use swan, because swan's a great wartime buy, and Frankie deserves the best. Oh, Frankie, Frankie, that's all I hear. And it's so unfair when George is a much better singer. Ain't misbehaving all Oh, stop. <laughs> Are you two kidding? Why, Frank Sinatra sang in the bowl a couple of Saturdays ago. That's nothing. George sang in the tub. <laughs> Well, I give up. Oh, I'm going over to see this Frank Sinatra. I'm going to tell him that from now on, my husband will be the one whose autograph they'll fight to get. My husband will be the one whose clothes they'll tear off. Oh, please, Grace. Oh, please, nothing. <laughs> I-, I won't rest, George, until the whole world finds out that you wear pink shorts. Oh. <laughs> Just a souvenir, and we'll heave a mighty sigh. When each 
gal to kiss the boy, she kissed goodbye. And there's a marching down Fifth Avenue, the United Nations did we do. When this lovely dream has all come true, we'll be dancing the big three polka. just arriving at Frank Sinatra's house to tell him that he'll soon be out of a job, that her husband, George Burns, is going to replace him as the nation's swooner crooner. Uh, hello, I'd like to see Frank Sinatra. I'm Frank Sinatra. Oh, oh my goodness. Are you Frank Sinatra? Well, yes. Won't you come in? Well, no, no, thank you. You see, I, um... I had some bad news to tell you, but now that I see you, I haven't got the heart. Why not? Well, you poor boy, you look so hungry. Really, I'm not hungry, Miss Allen. Oh, you recognize me. Well, sure, although I didn't at first. I thought you were a high school kid after my autograph. Oh, you mean one of those teenage girls? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> of course, some people have a mistaken idea that I'm older than that. My, uh, my mother and father, for instance. Uh, what do they know about yeah, that? that's what I say. Well, uh, uh, what, what is it that you wanted to tell me? Well, I, I'd hate to say it now after you've been such an adorable liar. Well, that's all right. Uh, what's this bad news? Well, you see, I'm married to George Burns. Oh. That is bad. No, I think I know how you feel. You know how I feel? Yes, you see, for a long time, I didn't get much of my salary either. <laughs> oh, but I'm, uh, I'm afraid you, um, you don't understand, Mr. Sinatra. The bad news is for you. For me? Yes. Your career is over. What? My husband sings. Well? Well, there's only room for one spoon of crooner. Frank Sinatra or George Burns, so naturally you've got to go. Well, uh, maybe there's room for both your husband and me in the singing business. Oh, no, no. I'm afraid not, Frankie. You see, you're both the same type. I can tell because you both have the same effect on people. Well, what do you mean? Well, when you sing, women swoon. And does that happen when George sings? Well, even men faint. <laughs> yes, uh... I've heard your husband sing, and I can believe that. Oh, sure. Well, I, I guess that's all I have to say, Frankie. Goodbye, and oh, be sure to tune in Saturday night and listen to the hit parade starring George Burns. <laughs> uh, just a moment, Mrs. Burns. I don't claim to be a great singer, but I do know that I'm better than George Burns. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> no, I, I mean it. Well... <laughs> There's only one thing to do, then. We'll have a contest and embarrass you publicly. Oh, now, Mrs. Burns, a contest? Oh, afraid, huh? Well, no. As a matter of fact, I'll be broadcasting at CBS this afternoon, so you bring your husband over and we'll let the audience decide. Mm-hmm. You're awfully game, you foolish boy. 
<laughs> oh, just one thing, Mrs. Burns. You know, of course, that the audience is going to be full of young girls. Oh, naturally. What of it? Oh, nothing. But uh, if you want George Burns to win, I think you'd better mix some slow crows in with the slick chicks. <laughs> That's what Sinatra said. Slow crows, mm -hmm. huh? And he said then, to meet him here at CBS, and you two could let the audience decide between you. Slow crows, huh? Mm -hmm. He certainly has a lot of cheek. Oh, no, George. They're hollow. <laughs> but it's very becoming. Hmm. I suppose I won't get over with the girls because I haven't got hollow cheeks. Well, you can always open your shirt and show them your chest. <laughs> Thanks, kid. Oh, and another thing about Frankie. He's got a lock of hair that falls across his forehead. It makes him look like a cute little boy. Oh. Maybe that's why the girls go for him. He brings out the mother in them. Oh, maybe. <laughs> but when he sings, they put her away and bring out something younger. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll sing rings around him. You're here, Gracie. Where is he? Where is he? What, uh, what's she doing here? Oh, I promised to, that I'd introduce her to Mr. Sinatra. Gracie. Oh, over here, Mr. Sinatra. Hello. Are you uh, ready for the contest? Well, we certainly are. Oh, I want you to meet my husband, Mr. Burns. How do you do, sir? Don't shake hands with me. He's George Burns. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, I'm uh, Tootsie Sagwell, Frankie, and I'm one of your most devoted admirers. I buy 50 copies of every record you make. 50 copies of the same record? Uh-huh. Well, you see, she sleeps with them and they break. <laughs> Now I've heard everything. Frankie, on one of your programs, would you sing a song just for me? A song that'll tell me how it feels to, to have a man sweep me into his arms and kiss me and kiss me. Okay, how about you'll never know? <laughs> oh, you're adorable. Oh, now, Tootsie, Tootsie, stop hanging on Mr. Sinatra. Oh, you poor boy. You really should eat more. <laughs> now, look, just take a look at George. He eats the breakfast of champions. Looks like the uh, champions didn't leave him much today. <laughs> oh, just a minute. Oh, son. now, look, you two boys go into the studio and rehearse. I'll join you in a minute. Come on, Tootsie. Goodbye, Frankie. <laughs> so you're George Burns, eh? Yeah. Ain't misbehaving all by myself. <laughs> Do you think the kids will dig my voice? If you'd be able to, there's plenty of gravel in it. <laughs> okay, Bowtie, where do we hold this contest? Right in here, Studio A. Okay, let's get started. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Burns, you rehearse first. No, no, take it, kid. I don't need a rehearsal. <laughs> Man, you frighten me. George, I heard all that applause outside. You killed them. They loved you, huh? Ah, that was for Sinatra. You know, when he hits certain notes, all the girls go, oh. They go, what? Oh. And not only that, but they answer him when he sings. Oh, I see. Say, you ready to start the contest, George? Sure, Bill. Go ahead. Okay, Felix. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness radio history. A singing contest between Frank Sinatra, who is adored by millions... And George Burns, who is loved by his wife. <laughs> and now here is the first contestant, George Sugarthroat Burns. <laughs> hey, Felix, 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 wait a minute. I don't need all that orchestra. That a boy, George. Show him up. Yes. I'll sing the same number and just give me a, just a piano player. Yeah, and have him play with only one hand. Okay. Okay, Felix, let's go. I'm not much to look at. Nothing to see. You said it. <laughs> now, you keep quiet, miss. Now, I'll do the reactions to my husband's song. Just glad to be living and lucky to be. You said it, George. <laughs> but I've got a woman crazy for me. She's funny that way. Oh. <laughs> Uh, what was that? Uh, go on, sing. Sing, I'm reacting. I ain't got a dollar. I'm not worth a cent. You said it, George. <laughs> but she doesn't holler. She'd live in a tent. 
I got a woman crazy for me. She's funny that way. Oh, oh what is that? <laughs> George out, react to a song. Okay, Gracie. Gee, she likes to work and slave for me every day. But she won't have to work and slave if she uses swan soap. Huh? Swan, you know, is four soaps in one. The soap for dishes, for your light laundry, the soap for bathing the baby, and the soap for your complexion. Four swell soaps in one. Let's take that again, Felix. Gee, she likes to work and slave for me every day. She'd be so much better off... Using swan soap. Bill, please. Quiet, George. Bill is reacting to your song. Yeah, George, quiet. And you get a great reaction with swan soap. Even babies love it. And say, doctors recommend swan for bathing babies. Swan's so mild and gentle. Swan's pure, too. Pure as fine castiles. And if it's good for baby, well, swan should be great for anybody's hands and face, right? If I went away, <laughs> but why should I leave? That's right, Lieber. Lieber Brothers Company oh. makes swan. <laughs> and remember, you can break swan in two and put half in the kitchen for dishes and light laundry and half in the bath for your hands and face, tub or shower. Oh, shut up. I don't want any more reaction. I've only got eight bars left to top Sinatra. Come on, Felix. Give me all you've got. Why should I leave her? Why should I go? She'd be unhappy without me, I know. I got a woman crazy for me. She's funny that way. Ah. <laughs> well, Mr. Sinatra, after hearing that, I suppose you'd like to call the contest off? No, Mrs. Burns. Call me a fool if you like, but I think I have a fighting chance. Well, all right, if you insist. Because I've never heard you sing. But can a sparrow compete with a nightingale? Well, at least I'll try. Won't you tell me when we will meet again Sunday, Monday If you're satisfied, I'll be at your side Sunday, Monday, or always No need to tell me now what makes the world go round When at the sight of you, my heart begins to pound and found and what am I to do can I be with you Sunday Monday or always you tell me when we will meet again Sunday Monday And if you're satisfied, I'll be at your side, Sunday, Monday, or always, no need to tell me now what makes the world go round, when at the sight of you, my heart begins. To pound and pound And what am I to do? Can I be with you? Sunday, Monday, or Mrs. Burns, do you still think your husband is the better singer? Mrs. Burns. Hmm? Uh, oh, what did you say, Frankie? I said, 
Do you still think your husband is the better singer? Your husband? What husband, Frank? <laughs> Gracie, Gracie, he wants to know if I'm better than he is. Mm, George Burns, take me home and don't you ever open your mouth again. <laughs> back in a second, and say, while I'm standing here, I might mention that no woman has to go around with her hands looking all red and chapped and rough, simply because she washes her own dishes and does her own light laundry. If you've got your hands in soap and water a great deal, just make sure the soap is swan. Swan's as pure as fine castiles, and swan's so mild and gentle, it's kind to even a baby's tender skin. So certainly it's going to be kind to your hands, and help keep them looking beautiful. That makes sense, doesn't it? Try Swan. It's a great wartime buy, believe me. Well, here they are again, George and Gracie. George. Don't speak to me. Are you mad? Down right I am. Oh, now that's silly. Frank Sinatra means nothing to me. Really? Really. The very idea of grown women acting like schoolgirls just because of him. Well, I certainly... Gracie, what are you doing? Putting on my bobby sock. <laughs> Swan, the new white floating soap. Join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune in to your CBS station again next week, same time. Remember George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS next Tuesday night. Don't forget to listen to Swan's other show, Tommy Riggs and Betty Lou, next Friday night over another network. Now, till next week, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I, Swan, how about you? Good night, everybody. <laughs>